Good morning and happy Monday, Cubs. I'm making a video for you today about grief. We'll talk about what the word means. We'll talk about the idea of grief. I'm going to read a book with you about grief. And I've got a few questions for you at the end also. Thank you to Maddie for requesting this video. I'm always wondering what kind of topics you want me to talk about. So thank you for letting me know that you wanted to talk about ones in our family who we've lost. Let's start off talking about what the word grief means. Well, it's the name of the feeling we have when we lose someone or something. Here are some examples of things that make us feel grief. Someone we love dies. Maybe you have a family member who is gone for another reason. For example, a divorce. Or maybe someone you love is in jail now and you can't see them. Or maybe someone just left. You don't know why they left. You don't know where they are. They're just gone. But grief can also be for things. It doesn't have to be for people. We might feel grief right now because of the pandemic. We don't get to do things that we used to be able to do. You might feel grief over losing on experiences or activities like a vacation you used to go on or people you used to see or being able to come to school and see your teachers and friends. You can feel grief about that also. I think there are two funny things about grief. Not funny haha, -ha, but funny weird. The first one is that we don't talk about grief very much. It's kind of an uncomfortable topic because the feelings we get when we grieve are uncomfortable feelings. And it can make people feel really sad to the point where they have tears coming down their face or it can make people feel really mad. And we don't like to feel uncomfortable and we don't like other people to feel uncomfortable either. So sometimes when we're grieving, we feel like it's just better to push those feelings down and kind of hide them and not think about them. But if you ask me, I think that those uncomfortable feelings are the most important ones to talk about and to think about. We can't make our feelings go away. All we can do is hide them for a little while and they're eventually going to come out. I think the more we talk about these uncomfortable things, the more they make sense to us and the better we can process them. The second thing that is kind of weird about grief is that it's so different for everyone. For some people, grief looks like crying and wanting to be alone and sleeping all day. For other people, grief looks like screaming and hitting and throwing things. For some people, grief looks like nothing. They just seem happy. They don't seem like anything sad has happened at all. And also, the way you grieve on Monday looks different from the way you grieve on Tuesday. Sometimes you're crying in the morning as soon as you wake up and think about that person you've lost. And by lunchtime, you're playing with your friends or running around with your dog and you've not acted like anything is wrong. And then by dinner time, you're so mad. And then maybe you go to bed and you're crying again. Grief changes. It's kind of tricky like that. And there's no right way to grieve and there is no wrong way to grieve either. Right now, we just finished celebrating a major holiday where families get together, Thanksgiving. And we're about to, for many of us, celebrate Thanksgiving. Sorry, Christmas. Between Thanksgiving and Christmas, this can be a really difficult time for families who are grieving because when we think about our holidays, we think about our family that we spend the holidays with. And if someone isn't here who we used to spend holidays with, it can bring all of those feelings of grief up. So right now might be an extra difficult time for people who are grieving. So I wanna share a book with you today. It's a book that helps you understand grief. My favorite thing about this book is that it gives us something we can do with our grief. It's not going to make the grief go away. Nothing except for time makes grieving better, but it does make it feel a little better. I don't know about you, but I like to have plans for things. When I have yucky feelings, I like to do something about it. And that's why I like this book. I hope you like it too. Let's go ahead and read this book together. All right. I don't have this book in my office, but here it is. 
and let's read it together. It's called The Memory Box. I really like this book because it gives us so many ideas and understanding about grief. All right. I lost my balloon once. Oh, she's still playing with the pages. I lost my balloon once. I tried to hold onto it tight to never let it go, but it was windy and I was running. I watched it fly higher than the trees above the clouds, past where I couldn't see. I was sad. But not as sad as I am now. I can always get another balloon, but I can never have another you. I miss you. Do you notice that the girl is standing next to a gravestone in a cemetery? Losing a person is much harder than losing a toy. Sometimes I wonder what happens to your love now that you're gone. Did it die too? Because I'm scared I'll forget you. Those are such common questions. We wonder where people go once they die and we're so scared about what's gonna happen to us when we miss people. Sometimes I wish I could still give you a hug. I would hug you so tight and a great big bear hug and never let go. Ugh, when we miss someone, we miss getting to hear their voice, see their face, and touch them. I'm making a box so I won't forget you. With our memories like sand from the beach where we played and left footprints as we ran from crashing waves. Here's the idea, guys. This girl is gonna make a box and fill it with ideas and memories and objects that make her remember the person she's lost. I want to go everywhere we've been, everywhere you've been, everywhere we wanted to go. It's hard sometimes to think about the things we'll miss out on. I go to places that help me think of you. I look around and remember, it makes me smile. Then I find the perfect thing for my memory box. She probably feels sad when she goes to these places that makes her think of who she's lost. But then when she finds that object for her box, it makes her grief feel a little better. Some days are good, I laugh, I smile, other days, I wonder if I'll ever stop feeling sad that you're gone. But I always think of you. So many things remind me of you. Notice that she's saying grief can look like happiness and it can look like it's real sadness. Today, I'm asking everyone about their favorite memories of you. Silly, sweet, some just so you. I'm listening to every word, imagining you laughing with us. Oh, do you see how they're all talking about it? They're not ignoring the sadness. They're all talking about it together. That's keeping the memory alive and making those yucky feelings better. It helps me when I think about our special times, and it even helps to still do the things we had planned to do together. You're still with me in my heart. Now I'm making new memories. My first time on a roller coaster, trying a new sport, exploring a new place. I'll always share these memories with you. I was afraid I would forget you, but I won't. You'll always be with me no matter where I go. Whenever I miss you, I'll think of you and I'll never forget. Look at that box. She really made it special. And that's the book, guys. This book was written by Joanna Rowland and illustrated by Thea Baker. And I really like this book because, let me get my screen off of here. I really like this book because not only does it show us something we can do when we're feeling sad, like making a box and filling it with memories, but also I love that they talk about the feelings. It's so important to still feel those feelings that are yucky, like feeling sad or feeling mad. We can't hide those feelings. We can't shove them down into a place deep inside of us and never feel sad. It'll come out eventually. 
and it's better to handle it sooner than later. When they get bottled up and come out later on their own, they're usually so big and scary that they can really mess with us. So here's some questions I have for you. Are you grieving right now? Have you lost someone? Maybe a family member, maybe a friend, maybe a neighbor, maybe someone who you don't know very closely, but you know that you've lost them and you're still having some feelings about that. And my other question is, who are you talking to about it? You can always talk to me. You can talk to your teacher in your morning meetings. Let her know that you need to talk about something after class. You can talk to any trusted adult. You can talk to friends your own age. You can even just tell yourself out loud or in a journal. Just make sure you're talking about it. It's normal to grieve. And even though it doesn't feel good to do it, it is important to let yourself feel those feelings. One day, you will think about the person you've lost and you won't cry. You'll think about all the happy things and the good memories. And those will be stronger than the bad feelings, like missing them and feeling sad. Thank you guys for listening to my video today. I know it's a little bit longer than most of my videos, but grief is a really big topic. It's a really big feeling, and there's a lot to say about it. I hope that what I said made sense and maybe made you feel better if you are grieving right now. It is so normal. There's no right way, no wrong way. Anything you're feeling is right, and anything you're feeling is okay. Please know that you can talk to me about anything, anytime. You can log on and see me in a Google Meet. You can send me a text or call me on my Google Voice number, and you can send me messages through Google Classroom anytime. Thank you, Maddie, for asking for this video, and I hope that it helped you with your family's loss that you said you had some questions about. All right, Cubs, have a great week. Good luck getting caught up in these final two school weeks before we leave for the semester. I can't wait to find out if we'll be seeing each other in person in January. I really hope so. And if not, I look forward to still connecting with you through videos and Google Classroom. Have a great day.